The last time we were together, we talked about a problem that maybe looks like this. Remember that? Okay. And so what did we do first in this problem? So first of all, we noticed that the absolute value is by itself. It was isolated, right? And when we knew it was by itself, we got two problems from it. We took what was in the absolute value and said it, it, was, as pos mm, it was a positive value. And then we took what was inside the absolute value and we took its negative value, right? And remember when we say positive value, we're not making sure these are both positive. They just both happen to be positive in the problem. We just brought it straight down for what it was inside the absolute value. When we took its negative value, we took it straight out and then multiplied that whole entire thing by a negative. Remember that? How did we solve this first problem? So we subtracted 2 on both sides. x equals 3. And then what about in the second problem? We had two options, right? We could either distribute the negative or we could divide, divide by negative 1 on both sides. Do you mind if I do that one, uh, this first example today? Yeah. Okay, so if I divide by negative 1 here and here, I get x plus 2 equals negative 5. And then yeah, subtract, two. subtract 2 from both sides. x equals negative 7. And to kind of give us a visual representation of our solution, what did we do with it? Well, we plugged it in to check it. Right, you're right. No, we need to do that first. So I said 3 plus 2, 5, absolute value of 5. Does 5 equal 5? Yes. Negative 7 plus 2, negative 5, absolute value of negative 5. 5, does 5 equal 5? Yes. So I know those, are two, those two are right. Then what, what did we do to give us our visual representation of our solution? Number yeah, number line. We said negative 7 and positive 3. Mm -hmm. And what did I do with those? Just yeah, I put a dot on negative 7 and a dot on 3 because those are our two solutions. God bless you for this equation. You okay with that? Yeah. Now, some of you got a little stuck on one of the problems that looks like this. Um, when you did your division first, I think it ended up, I'm just totally making this up because I can't remember what exactly what it looked like, um, but we'll go with like this, four-thirds, something like that, right? <coughs> I think it was seven halves, but we'll go with four-thirds, okay? Guys, I want you to use your brain here for a second. Wait, you need to get, you need to get yours? No, just use your brain right here, okay? You should have brought it with you. Okay. If I take the absolute value of a number, will that ever equal a negative number? No. So from here, we just write no solution. Now, some of you actually wrote this as the positive and the negative, and then you solved it by adding three to both sides. But what you figured out is that your solutions didn't work. Because when you took the absolute value, you got a positive four-thirds. And positive four-thirds does not equal <coughs> negative four-thirds, does it? Okay, so just be careful about that. If you get to a place like this where it's the absolute value of a negative number or equals a negative number, there's not a solution because there's no absolute value that we can take that will give us a negative answer. Okay? Okay. So let's go to today's. You ready for today's? It looks almost identical. X plus 5, absolute value, excuse me, of X plus 5 is less than 8. So how is this different from yesterday? It's not equal to. It's called an inequality, right? It's not equal to. It's an inequality. This particular inequality is less than, okay? I, under no circumstances, want to hear you talking about alligators. You are 17 years old? 16? 18 years old, right? We don't need to talk about alligators anymore. This is just a less than sign. You okay? Okay. So here's the fun part. Because of the way we taught it yesterday, because the way we learned it yesterday, 
we just are going to start off doing exactly the same thing we did yesterday. Is the absolute value isolated? Yeah. Yes, so I need a positive and negative, right? So I have x plus 5 is less than 8, and I also have negative of the x plus 5 is less than 8. See, that's the good part. If we would have done it the way they showed us how to do it, we would have to be thinking about different rules right now. I don't want to do that. Neither do you, right? Okay. So let's start solving this one. Hey, wait, can we take a commercial break? Let's take a commercial break and come over here to the side. Let me ask you a couple questions. Is this a true statement? Yes. Is three less than five? Yes. Okay. What if I add six to both sides? Is that still a true statement? Yes. What if I subtract one from both sides? Is that still a true statement? Yes. Okay. What if I multiply both sides by four? Yes. So like times four times four. Is twelve still less than twenty? Yes. What if I divide both sides by two? Yes. Is six still less than ten? Yes. So what if I divide both sides by negative two? Is negative three less than negative five? No. No, it's not. Wait, did I do anything wrong? No. I thought if I thought if you did it to the same side, it stays the same. Not when it comes to inequalities. Okay. And specifically, like you guys are saying, not when it comes to negatives. When we're dealing with inequalities, and I divide, and it turns out that it's multiply also, if I multiply or divide by a negative number, what do I have to do to this sign right here to make this inequality still true? I do. Okay? Now, you're saying flip the sign. Okay? I want to make sure that you guys all understand that doesn't have anything to do with any middle fingers. Okay? Negative 3 is now greater than negative 5. Okay? We're flipping that inequality sign, not that other sign that you want to flip. Okay? Does that make any sense? Do you see why we have to do it? I know some of you knew that rule already, but I don't know if you ever knew why we had to do it that way. Mm-hmm. So that means negative 3 is not less than negative 5. It is greater than negative 5, so we have to flip this sign. Because this inequality is just not true anymore, is it? Okay, Okay. back to the show. Now what? Okay, subtract 5 from both sides. X is less than? Yes, 3. Excellent. Now, I have a recommendation, but I also have some words of advice. Fair? We have two options right here. We talked about these yesterday. It's the same two options we had yesterday. We can either distribute the negative one right here and finish solving the problem, or we could go ahead and divide by the negative one right here and go ahead and solve the problem, right? Okay. What did I have us do on this example right here that we just did? Why do you think I had you do that? If I divide by a negative 1 right here, what am I going to be forced to do? Okay. Flip that sign. Chances are you'll remember it if it's at the beginning. But when would we divide by negative 1 if I distributed this? At the end, right? It would be the basically the last step before getting my answer. Okay? You can do it either way, and you can get the right answer either way. I promise. Okay, but I might suggest to you that you go ahead and divide by a negative one right here because you're more likely to remember to, to flip the sign at this point in the problem, like the very beginning, than if you wait till the end. But again, like I said, neither way is more correct or wrong. Okay, so here we have x plus 5. Greater yeah, greater than negative 8. Because right here, we divided by a negative number, so we flipped that inequality sign. Okay? Guys, I know this seems silly, but I just want to make sure you understand. When I say I'm flipping the sign, I'm not saying 8 to negative 8. It's not that sign I'm talking about. 
Does everybody understand that? It's the, I'm flipping the inequality sign. Now it just so happens that it's changing signs right here because I'm dividing by a negative, but the sign that I'm actually flipping is the inequality sign, flipping it over. Okay. So now to solve this, all I have left to do is subtract 5 from both sides. So x is greater than negative 13. You okay with that? So here's here's something interesting. Okay? Something some people don't like it. If you don't like it, you'll get over it. It'll be okay. Okay? But think about this. Three. What's three plus five? Eight. eight. What's the absolute value of eight? Eight. eight. Is eight mm -hmm. less than eight? No, it's equal to, right? So when we're going to substitute these numbers in to check and make sure that they're right, eight's not really less than eight, but is it still kind of the right answer? When we plug it in to check it, we kind of have to think of it as an equation, even though it's really not an equation, right? Same thing's gonna happen with negative 13. Negative 13 plus five is negative eight. Absolute value of negative eight is eight. Eight is not less than eight, but hopefully you see that we've done the math so well that the numbers are the same on both sides. Okay, so when we did last night's homework, we started here, we set up two equations, since my absolute value was isolated, right, I set up my two equations, one positive, one negative, I solved for both of them, I plugged them in to check them, and then what? Visual representation of our answer, right, we graphed it, so negative 13 and positive 3. X is less than 3. Is it part of 3? Is 3 part of the answer? I mean, it's not, is it? So I still, I'm at 3, but I put an open circle around 3 because it's as close as we can get to 3, but not 3, right? And which way would I shade? Do you see that shading has to go on here? Because it's everything less than 3. Can I show you a little trick? It doesn't work all the time, so I'm just telling you from the beginning, okay? It only works when the variable is on the left-hand side and the number is on the right-hand side, so like in this order, x and then 3, right? If that's true, that'll tell you which way to shade, okay? If the variable is on this side and the number is on this side, variable on the left, number on the right, it'll tell you which way to shade. Now, I'm just going to tell myself right now which way to shade. I'm not gonna, actually going to do any shading yet. Okay, what about this one? Open circle or closed circle on negative 13? Open circle here. Which way would I shade? To the right. So wh where do you think the answer is? Oh, in between? So wait a second, there's not just two answers? How many answers are there? We can go with several, that's fine. Okay, there's quite a lot. Every single number in between 13 and 3 is an answer. Ne excuse me, negative 13 and 3 is an answer. Including like negative 12 and 1 and negative 2 and negative 2.63748. Mm -hmm. So there's really a whole ton of answers in between there, right? Okay. So that's what we're doing today. We're not doing equations today, we're doing inequalities today. Can I show you another example? Yeah. Oh, okay, thank you. So kind of you. Wait, easy one or hard one? Hard. Okay. Sorry, my writing is a little messy today. I smashed my thumb this morning. And I'm having to write not like I normally do like this because that hurts. 2x minus 1, absolute value, minus 4 is greater than or equal to 7. You guys have it good though because second period I couldn't write very well so I was writing left-handed. Um, That's how their notes looked. I 
I mean, sometimes I just can't hum help it if I'm amazing. I just have to go with it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so what do we do first? We isolate the Okay, so let me ask you this question. You asked for a hard one, and this is the one I wrote. Nobody screamed or cried or anything. Does this look hard? No. 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 I mean, I could probably make it harder if I tried by using bigger numbers, by using decimals or fractions. I could have put a multiplier out here in the front, right here, but I chose to put one inside instead. But even when you ask for a hard one, this is what you get. Okay? Okay. Now what? Add four. Absolute value of 2x minus 1 is greater than or equal to. Wait a second. Why didn't we just add the positive, have the positive and the negative right here? Why didn't we just do that from the start? So we did on this one up here, had the positive and the negative. Yeah, because because we had to get rid of the oh. Yeah, that was isolated. Absolute because value was not isolated, was it? Good job. Okay. So does anyone know what 7 plus 4 is? 11. Oh, excellent. Now what? Now we make our equation. Now we have the positive and the negative, right? Okay. So 2x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 11. That's the positive. Negative. 2x minus 1 is greater than or equal to 11. So the left hand one is usually the easier one to solve, right? Mm -hmm. So if I add 1 to both sides, 2x is greater than or equal to 12. Good. x is greater than or equal to 6. What do you want to do first on this one? Divide. Do you really want to divide? Because I told you to, or do you want to do it because that's what you want to do? I mean, would you really want to distribute first, or would you want to divide first? Divide. divide? Okay, that's fine. Negative 1, negative 1. 2x minus 1 is greater than or equal to... Uh-oh. Uh Less than or equal to... Less than or equal to... Negative 11. Guys, I totally did that on accident. I didn't do that on purpose to see if you were checking. Okay, see how easy it is to forget, even at the beginning? Okay, all right, add one, add one. 2x is less than or equal to negative 10. And when I divide both sides by 2, I get x is less than or equal to negative 5. Hmm. Yes. This was just an 11. 11 divided by negative the 1 the is a negative. In the what? Right here? Yeah. When I divide this whole negative part by negative 1, what's simplifying are those two things, not the negative 1 inside. I'm going to end up with exactly the same thing as it was inside before. Okay? Not a bad question. So here's, here's what's interesting. 6. 2 times 6 is 12. Minus 1 is 11. Absolute value of 11 is 11. 11 minus 4 is 7. Is 7 greater than or equal to 7? Yeah, it is. So when is it when is it weird? When it's only less than or greater than. Okay? Greater than or equal to, we're gonna get that or equal to part. Okay? Negative five times two is negative ten, minus one is negative eleven, absolute value negative eleven is eleven, eleven minus four is seven. We're good, right? Yeah. Now our graph. Whoop. Negative 5, positive 6. X is greater than or equal to 6. Close circle on 6. Shading which direction? X is greater than or equal to 6? So that way, right? 
x is less than or equal to negative 5. So close circle on negative 5. And which direction do I shade? Away. So are the two arrows like facing each other, like this one? Can we color it in between them? Oh, so it's out here and out here, right? So here, the first one, any number that I picked, as long as it was in between them, they worked, right? What if I pick 7? Does 7 work for this equation? It's weird, right? It's going to be here or here. It's not going to be both. It's going to be here or here. So it's like an or statement. Do you see how this is an and statement? It's it's greater than negative 13 and less than 3. So can this be and? It's less than negative 5 and greater than 6. There's not a there's not a number less than negative 5 and greater than 6, right? So what's the word we have to use? Or. Very good. Okay? Any questions?